After the fall of the Soviet Union, many countries still have similar things to the Soviets. The legacy of the Soviet Union is reflected in political, economic, cultural, and foreign affairs transformations experienced by its former republics since its break in 1991. From the transition to multi-party systems and market economies, to the revival of native cultures, the impact of the Soviet period continues to shape nations once under its influence. Soviet Union's Korean economy, characterized by central planning and state ownership, had a significant impact on its economic development. The economic crisis in the USSR resulted in most of the developing countries in poor condition. This foreshadows the change in the market economy in many former Soviet Union countries because there were many problems with having a common economy. Having a government controlling the economy is not a good thing. GDP fell as much as 50% in the 1990s in some republics. Soon, the economic rebound was there in the 2000s. By the end of the decade, some economies were five times as big as in 1991. High energy prices helped major exporters like Russia, Kazakhstan, Turkmenistan, and Azerbaijan, but even strugglers like Moldova and Armenia began to grow. Economically, these republics were heavily reliant on Moscow due to the legacy of the centralized Soviet economy. Russia controlled crucial hydrocarbon export pipelines, including those leading to the large creative and European market, forcing the countries to rely on Russia. Former Soviet Union countries mostly have mixed economies, unlike the command economy of the Soviet Union. Their negative experience under Soviet rule, characterized by inefficiencies and resource shortages, stopped their support with command economies. Because these countries want to benefit from the global market, having a market economy is very important. These questions about democracy and market economy were initially asked in 1991 and revisited in 2009. Central and Eastern Europe EU and members generally view EU accession positively and support democratic values. Countries like Poland and the Czech Republic have about 80 to 90 percent of the population favor change to a market economy and multi-party system. The Soviet Union has a significant impact on the politics of the countries it influenced. Through the spread of communism and the support for communist movements, the Soviet Union tried to apply control over various nations. This influence often led to establishment of communist governments in these countries, which aligned their policy with those of the Soviet Union. For example, in December 2020, the state Duma in Russia passed a bill and it is the third reading that would allow the federal media watchdog to block websites, including social media sites if they are found to restrict important information on Russian territory or contradict state media coverage of foreign sanctions against Russia or its citizens. Internet platforms found to be violating the law would be added to a blacklist of websites involved in violations of fundamental human rights and freedoms of Russian citizens. The Soviet Union's most former republics adopted multi-party and market economies, showing a shift in their preference. This suggests a recognition of the value of these systems after experiencing Soviet rule. Russia stands out with less than half supporting multi-party systems, highlighting a contrast with its former centralized economy. In this graph, we can see that countries close to Russia, which is the largest republic of the Soviet Union, have an authoritarian government. In contrast, countries far away from Russia, like the Baltic states, have a democratic government. Gulags, which was a system of forced labor camps in the Soviet Union. It was first established by a Soviet degree of 1919. At its height, the Gulag imprisoned billions of people. 
There is even a novel about the life of gulags. The name gulag had been largely unknown in the West until the publication of Alexander Solzhenitsyn, the Gulag's Archipelago, whose title likens the labor camps scattered through the Soviet Union to an island chain. In January 2023, the Kremlin is aiming to deepen its control of Russian occupied zones in Ukraine by building a large prison network. The Russian government is planning to build 25 prisons and three forced labor camps. The main goal of the plan is to control the population in these areas. To achieve this objective, Moscow has also officially created a new department of the Federal Security Service in the eastern region of Donetsk. Socialist realism was a literary movement most popular in the Soviet era. There are small discrepancies between social and socialist realism. The first one refers to art and literature that depicts subjects that are of social importance, usually the real world conditions of everyday working people. Socialist realism was the most important approved writing form in the Soviet Union. This means that everything an author wrote or an artist did, created was at the mercy of the government. Social realism was best characterized by the core beliefs of accessibility, the spirit of people, and the spirit of the party. The subjects and heroes of these works were usually simple and reliable. Yuri Krimov's Tinker Durbin 1938 established an adventure tale that attached to an undisciplined crew brought together by their communist captain. Communism encouraged these styles because they mentioned some poor low-class people, which corresponds to the idea of communism. Maxim Gorky is another epic author of proletarian writing, who was also in a close relationship with Stalin showing that the communism really liked their way of writing. It was meant to enforce positive images of the ruling party and to present an idealistic view of the ordinary worker and everyday life in the USSR. The idea of writing everyday life of lower classes influences lots of other countries in Asia, including Taiwan. During the martial law in Taiwan, there were two famous authors about social realism, named Chen Yingzhen and Huang Chenming. Chen was a social realist author who promoted the realist style in Taiwan's literary world. Because of this, she was arrested for organizing and reading communism books promoting for the communists in 1968. Her novels, such as My First Case and Night Fright, are about the working class getting tortured by the capitalist com companies which really matches the idea of communism. Night Fright is about the experience of working at a foreign company and getting lots of suppression. On the other hand, Huang Wu is also a local literature writer. His work, Taste of Apple, is about a worker getting hit by an American military colonel. Because of this, he is able to live in a high-class hospital, and he's given an apple. This apple ironically symbolized that workers can only eat apples when they are hit by an American colonel's car. Some, such as Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania, are now members of the European Union and NATO. For others, such as Ukraine, Moldova, Armenia, Azerbaijan, and Georgia, are often looking to the European Union for a closer relationship. During the Soviet ruling era, the central government took control of the economy, governance, and even the society. Members of the USSR have almost no rights to rule their own country. The high pressure the USSR placed on these countries, especially in the Baltic states, Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania, resulted in the shift to closer relationships with the European Union and the Northern Atlantic Treaty Organization. The Cold War had a huge impact on countries' relationships with other countries. Countries like North Korea, China, and Cuba 
were in a close reposition with the Soviet Union during the Cold War. The Soviet Union led the Cold War, which caused these countries to have a tense connection to other republics. For example, the U.S. has sanctioned North Korea by banning the trade of military items, electrical equipment, and oil and petroleum products. In 2016, President Obama imposed the toughest sanctions to date on North Korea, covering international finance, trade, and the export of North Korean labor, among other areas.